I have a weird relationship with video games. On the one hand, they've given me a deeper understanding of complex themes like friendship, love, and purpose, as well as unique insights into many of the models and archetypes that have largely shaped who I am today. On the other hand, there have been times, too many times, where instead of advancing my life or career, I was farming virtual gold until five o'clock in the morning. Video game addiction is now such a massive global problem that in 2019, the WHO officially added a new disorder to its list, gaming disorder, which is roughly summarized as an impaired control and over-prioritization of gaming despite the occurrence of negative consequences. And while we most often associate people with gaming disorders as overweight neckbeards still living in their parents' basements, the real gaming addicts are actually just normal everyday people, mostly in their 20s and 30s, who have become involuntarily enslaved to an artificial stimulus that is designed to keep us addicted. In this video, the first of two videos in my video games versus personal development series, I'm gonna be focusing exclusively on the negative aspects of video games and what makes them so uniquely addicting in an age of infinite distractions. Then in the next video, we'll talk about all of the positive aspects of video games and how they can actually help us move forward in life. If you wanna get notified when that video is released, make sure to subscribe and please click the bell icon. All right, let's go. Number one, our reward system loves instant gratification. Most people mistake dopamine as something that just makes us feel good. In reality, dopamine is actually responsible for motivating us to take action in anticipation of the thing that makes us feel good, the reward. So when we feel the urge to play video games, dopamine is actually the thing that motivates us to pick up the controller. Now the problem with dopamine is that it doesn't know how to distinguish between good rewards, which are normally long-term in nature, and bad rewards, which are normally short-term or instant in nature. Neurologically, they're both just rewards. And so when presented with the choice of getting an instant reward by playing video games or working towards a long-term reward by training our bodies or building a business, well, this is why it's so ridiculously easy to prioritize gaming over studying. Trying to manage video game playtime is like buying a pack of Oreos and intending to eat just one a day. Good fucking luck. As long as video games are accessible within our immediate environment, it takes a tremendous amount of conscious energy and discipline to be able to effectively manage how much we play. And to make matters worse, there's almost zero friction to go from the idea of playing video games to actually playing them. My PS5 now loads up so fucking fast that from the moment I had the idea to play Spider-Man, I could be playing within a few seconds. I can open up Candy Crush on my phone just as quickly as I can open up Instagram. Number two, video games are super normal stimuli. In Call of Duty, we're a highly trained soldier, hunting down terrorists and expertly maneuvering around obstacles while executing strategies with our teammates. In reality, we're just pushing buttons on a controller. This is a great example of how video games are a super normal stimuli. Let me explain. All living creatures have built-in programming to react instinctively to certain stimuli. A supernormal stimulus is an artificially exaggerated version of a normal stimuli that produces a greater response. So an example of this is junk food, which is an artificially exaggerated stimulus of real food, or porn, which is a supernormal stimulus of human reproduction. And so video games, well, they are loaded with supernormal stimuli. Games like Call of Duty and Halo and Fortnite are, are so rewarding because they closely mimic the activity of hunting. And the humans, zombies, and monsters we find in these games are all artificial exaggerations of predators. Sports games like FIFA and NBA 2K are evolved simulations that mimic hunting and battle skills. MMORPGs like World of Warcraft simulate an exaggerated sense of progression by including ranking systems, rare equipment, and achievements. And unlike real life, where progression takes real time and effort, in video games, we can, in just a few hours, go from like a weak, puny nothing to a legendary hero. All of this is tied into these primitive instincts we have where the best hunters and most accomplished members within these ancient tribes had better access to resources and potential mates. Even the upgraded gear that we purchase within these games is all tied to our innate desire to want to appear accomplished within society, even if it's a virtual one. Number three, video games use operant conditioning. This is a Skinner box. A Skinner box usually has a button or lever that activates a food dispenser. It was designed by Dr. B.F. Skinner to research how he could change an organism's behavior using rewards and punishment, a learning process that he dubbed operant conditioning. Now, what does this have to do with video games? 
Dr. Skinner made a lot of important observations, two of which are critical to understanding why video games are now deliberately addictive. Observation number one, rewards can be used to create addiction. Almost every game on the market is now overflowing with rewards. We gain experience points, loot, and virtual money for every monster we defeat. We get rewards for unlocking new skills, recipes, and equipment. And then in some games, we even get rewards just for logging in every day. In some cases, we get rewards just for getting a certain number of rewards. This is way better than real life. Former Ubisoft research scientist Nick Yee famously conducted studies that demonstrated how the more hours we spent playing video games, the more self-achievement we begin to derive from video games instead of from real life. By leveraging these systems of seemingly unending rewards, video games are starting to look a lot more like Skinner boxes than harmless sources of entertainment. Observation two, random rewards are even more addicting. We release much more dopamine when the rewards are random. This is why slot machines are so popular in casinos. And because of this, we've seen an unprecedented rise in gacha games. Gacha is short for gachapon, which are very popular machines in Japan where people put money in hoping to score a rare toy. Gacha gacha is the sound of the machine being cranked and pon is the sound made when you take the capsule out. Now, if you look closely at the Google Play Store on Android or the App Store on iOS, you'll find thousands of gacha games where the entire point of the game is to spend real money on loot boxes, crates, or wishes that might contain stronger equipment and heroes. Players can never directly buy these items. They can only offer up their money and pray to the gacha gods that today is their lucky day. A lot of these games are disguised as RPGs or card games. The reality is that they're just glorified slot machines. And what players think is a gaming addiction is actually just a gambling addiction. All right guys, so everything I just described in this video is exactly why I do not play online shooters, MMORPGs, and especially mobile games. Oh, what the hell? Whoa, whoa, where am I? Here's an easy trick that will help you to identify games that are intentionally designed to be addicting, something they all have in common. They don't have game over screens, or for that matter, any sort of stopping cues that give us a pause to decide if we wanna keep playing or not. My favorite thing to tell people when they ask me for advice on how to play video games while still maintaining productivity is this, avoid games that don't have an ending. Anyway, for me, I only play role-playing games. More recently, The Witcher 3, uh, Persona 5 Royal, 13 Sentinels. I love indie games like Journey, Celeste, and Grease. Uh, generally speaking, I tend to gravitate towards games with rich stories, deep characters, and unique experiences. And I also have a rule for myself where I only play video games while I train on my bicycle, which I will talk about in the next video where I'll be going all in on the positive aspects of games and how certain games can actually dramatically improve who we are and the quality of life that we possess. If you wanna see firsthand how video games have influenced my life, make sure to follow me on Instagram, at NelsonQuest. Make sure to check out these videos over here, one of which is that second video that I was talking about. And then in the comments below, let us know what role video games have played in your life. And when you're done leaving a comment, make sure to grab a free copy of my dark mode productivity system. You can get it at nelsonquest.com. I'll drop a link in the description below. Uh, I've got some really good recommendations in there about how to balance video games and productivity. This is The Path.